Build tight, ventilate right. We're back at my house under construction and I've got a really fun episode for you. We're talking ventilation today. You know, whether you're building to the standard I'm doing here, which is a really airtight enclosure. In fact, I'm building to passive house standards, which is a super tight envelope, or you're just building to modern codes, you got a tight house and you need to think about your ventilation strategy. The build show today, I'm gonna to show you the world's best ventilator, the system that I am super excited to install at my house. Today's build show is sponsored by Zender. Let's get going. All right guys, it's been a minute since we've been over here. This is my house under construction. We've been calling this the real rebuild. And if you haven't caught my other videos, this is basically a 1970s slab that I originally was gonna remodel and ended up building a new house on top of this old slab. So we're in the mechanical phase. So I took a couple months off just to get a couple things aligned, but we're back at it and we're having a lot of fun. So mechanicals are going in, that's HVAC. When we think about HVAC, we typically are just thinking the heating and cooling for the house, but the V is critical, that's your ventilation. And most builders, most houses under construction, the V, the ventilation is just an afterthought. That's your dryer exhaust. That's your exhaust fans out of bathrooms. Maybe there's a fresh air input to the furnace or through the dehumidifier. But on the build show today, I'm gonna show you a system that's like no other. It's a really good system. And let's talk about why we need that. When we build a really tight envelope like I have here, we're not having air infiltrate in when, it blow, when the wind blows or when uh, an exhaust fan turns on, let's say, the house is gonna be really, really airtight. So as a result, we need a fresh air input. And I would say whether you're building a house to this crazy tight standard or you're building a more modern house uh, to, uh, let's say, just code built standards, you probably need a fresh air system and you probably need a really good one because we don't wanna rely on fresh air just when the wind is blowing, right? Or when your furnace kicks on. We want that fresh air all the time. Now I wanna use our bodies as an example or a prototype for a house. When God designed our bodies, we've only got one spot for air to come in, right? Through our nose or our mouth into our lungs. And our lungs are using their muscles constantly 24 seven just to breathe a little bit in and out, out of this one spot. We don't poke a hole in our body to get to our lungs. We don't want air leaking into other spaces. It only should come in through our mouth and our lungs. Now man has been doing this for years, right? We make submarines, we make spaceships. We know how to do breathing in enclosed airtight enclosures, but we haven't been paying that much attention to our houses. And what we're doing here is a system that's very similar to the body where in this house, I'm gonna show you, we only have one place for air to come in and one place for air to exhaust. Now specifically, we're installing a Zender ERV in this house. And if you're in the north, you've probably heard of HRVs, that's heat recovery ventilators. This is basically the same thing, except it's not just gonna recover the heat out of the fresh air, it's also gonna recover energy or enthalpy, moisture basically. Now, this is my first floor, mainly public spaces here, but my master is back there. Let's actually go up to the second floor in the attic is where this unit's being installed. I'll meet you up there. All right, guys, so I've got a big family. I've got four kiddos. I've got three bedrooms up, and my unit actually is gonna be above us. But before we get there, let's talk about what a typical house has, a typical house that I would build, frankly, and have built for years. Each bathroom is gonna have its own exhaust fan, sometimes two. And my house is a three and a half bath house, which means I've got at least three exhaust fans. In the master, usually you've got one in the toilet room and the shower room. So that's five exhaust fans. Plus, you're usually gonna have an exhaust fan out of the laundry room, so that's six exhaust fans. Then you've got a range exhaust. You've got usually a dryer port coming out. Usual house of this size, you know, a four bedroom house, 2,700 square feet, wouldn't be unusual at all to have eight different fans, eight different penetrations out of your envelope, places that are gonna leak, that could bring squirrels and bugs in, that could have all these other ancillary issues. With this system, I don't have any of that. Everything's gonna run through my fresh air system. So for instance, now we're in my daughter's bedroom upstairs. This is the supply. And what these little tubes right here are gonna do is they're gonna constantly puff in just a little bit of fresh air into my daughter's bedroom. Now we're gonna get into the mechanics of that in a second, but basically every area of my house where there's a bedroom or a public area 
is going to have one of those, a place to bring fresh air in. And then all the other places, bathrooms, laundry rooms, uh, anything that's basically wet or stinky, that's going to have an exhaust out. And what I love about this system, you're going to see in a minute, is I just have two inputs. I have two 8-inch ducts, one coming in and one going out. And then my ERV upstairs is a balance system. With that being said, let's go up and show it to you because this is a really cool system. And I actually have the Zender rep Chris up there as well. I'll meet you upstairs. Oh man, I love this attic. Doesn't this look awesome? Now this will be all conditioned space. If you haven't seen my videos, I've got a couple inches of exterior insulation and then I'm gonna pack these bays full of rock wool. So this will be part of my air conditioned envelope. But here's the unit and here's Chris from Zender right here. Hey Chris, how's, how's it going? going Matt? How's the unit looking, man? It's looking good. Uh, we've had fun the last couple days. Jeff and his crew from Airright has done a phenomenal job putting this thing together. Oh. And uh, I'm excited to see it fired up in a couple months. It looks good. Yeah. All right, Chris, I gave the basics on this unit, but give me the nerdy, the nerdy stats. I gotcha. made the, the bold statement that this was the world's <laughs> most efficient, yeah. best ventilation system. Can you back that up? Sure, yeah. A uh, few things with the Zender system. First of all, it's a, this is a, the, the Zender Comfortware Q600 ERV. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, basically what we're doing with this uh, is we're, we're changing the air throughout the house. We're gonna do that on a continuous basis. And uh, what makes it the best? Um, first and foremost is gonna be the performance of the unit itself. And I'll break that down and show you a couple things. Um, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to ventilate you're trying to control that ventilation. Mm -hmm. You want to you want to uh, do it with energy recovery, so that you're not you know otherwise just leave the windows open. All but, right. So if we're in the north, we're yep. worried about just an HRV, a heat recovery. Sure. Yeah. Because generally in really cold climates, it's low moisture outside. But here in the south, in the southern U.S., often it's really humid out, and if we bring that fresh air in, there's a big penalty because now we've got all this humidity to deal with. Right. And all of a sudden, if I'm ventilating correctly, my house humidity could go way up right. and I've lost that comfortable feeling. Right. Yeah, so an ERV is gonna allow you to transfer moisture between the two air streams. And how efficient is this in both heating recovery and moisture recovery? Right. Uh, with an ERV, you're gonna have a slightly less uh, sensible or heating recovery than you do with an HRV. Okay. Uh, but still, you're gonna be with this unit around 85% Heat recovery, that's, that's 85% of the difference in temperature between outdoors and indoors. Gotcha, so it's a 50 degree delta, which would be unusual for me. Yeah. But a 50 degree delta, 85% yep. of that that's temperature right. I'm gonna be able to recover 45 back. degrees of it or so, somewhere in that range. Okay. Uh, and um, and then on that on the, the humidity side, we're gonna mm -hmm. recover about two thirds of the difference between outdoor and indoor humidity. And those numbers, by the way, one of the reasons why I said this is the world's best is those numbers are much higher than all the other yeah. units out there. Yeah. Now talk to me about the tubes and show us what's happening in the guts, if you would. Great, sure. Okay, well, let's start with the guts first. Um, the Q600 is a really smart uh, ERV. Mm -hmm. So the controls are basically this is a self-balancing unit, so the controls are, are constantly monitoring the air temperature. Uh, it knows the, the uh, altitude that you're at because you plug that in during commissioning. Mm -hmm. And so it can calculate, based on density, how much air is actually flowing through it. Wow. And it will adjust the supply fan and the exhaust fan independently to constantly maintain balance. So if you've got a windy day, it's going to pick up on that. Wind's blowing on one side, maybe the intake side or the exhaust side it will adjust for it. Maybe your intake filter starts getting dirty over time. It senses that, it adjusts the, the supply fan speed to deal with that. And how efficient are those motors too? Yeah, the motors are super efficient. What we're looking for is, you know, basically less than three quarters of a watt per CFM. So uh, that's, that's a pretty good standard. And, um, and the Q600 meets it easily. So this unit we've kind of engineered, by the way, Positive Energy helped me out with the design, yeah. but you guys do that as well. Yeah. We engineered the system at my house for my conditions, my number of people in the house to run at 180 CFM. That means we're sucking in 180 CFM and we're pushing out 180 right. at the same time. And when those pipes uh, are bringing that in and exhausting. So this pipe hasn't been hooked up yet, but that's the fresh air in. Yep. We're bringing it from the north side of the house. And then this is the exhaust out. We're taking that on the kind of south and west side of the house. Right. 
How does the core work uh, to kind of yeah. pass those streams without touching each other? So what you'll see on the top of the unit here is we have four duct connections. And as you said, these two are connected to the exterior of the house. This is your exhaust, this is your intake. Over here, we've got the return coming back. Okay, so we're seeing arrows yep, in. That's, that's right. going back into the unit from the house. Yep, and here's your supply, so it's coming out. All the, basically have two air streams that are being directed through this heat exchanger core, or in mm -hmm. your case, an enthalpy exchanger. Yeah. Um, and let's take a look at it, yeah, and we'll see that, what it looks pull that like. Off. I know you got what three screws on there that need popped out. Yep. Get those off. Just slide this open. It's a big unit too, isn't it? It's a big unit, and a lot of people remark on that if if they've seen ERVs at all, a lot and of them they are real see compact. this. Yeah. Well, and and. That can be nice if you're trying to fit it into a compact space, but if you're looking for actual performance in your heat and humidity recovery, you need surface area. We just need more and, surface area to be more efficient. This core, especially, that gives you that surface area for that transfer. This is called a, a plate exchanger, and mm -hmm. the reason it's called that is because what you've got is a series of plates in this basic shape mm -hmm. that are stacked together. These plates are, are uh, formed in such a way that they create channels. So here in your case, we're going to be pulling return air from your house, mm -hmm. mainly your bathrooms and kitchen. Yep. We'll come through here and it will get directed into this side of the, of the core. Uh, your outdoor air will be coming in around the attic through that back port there and it will be directed into this side. And so what we've got is air that's going to get organized. And if you think of this center rectangular section of this hex shape as the heat exchange section, it gets organized and then we have counter flow happening. Wow. So you've got one airstream on one side of each plate, uh -huh. the other airstream on the opposite side of the plate. And there's a lot of technology in these cores, guys. When I was doing these my research, uh, long before I decided on using Zender at my house, I was getting into the nerdiness of version one, two, three, and four of these plates. And there's still ones on the market yeah. that are more version one and two. Yep. This is really the latest and best technology. Uh, which has the most amount of surface area yeah. so that we're really exchanging that heat from one yeah. to the other. That's how we're getting that like 85, 90% efficiency. That's Typically, crazy numbers. Yeah, what, what you'll usually see, uh, very common, especially in the North American market, but now even in, in uh, China, is you'll see the, the cross flow heat exchanger. And you know it's cross flow because it's just a square. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the, basically the two airstreams just go past each other like that. Yep. And each, each channel just has one point of, of contact. Here, uh, when you see this hexagonal shape, that's when you know you're dealing with a counter flow heat exchanger. And you're, you just should expect you're going to get much better performance. Love it. Yep. Now, I'm also seeing, uh, I'm assuming this is a pre-filter because this is, uh, oh no, that's the exhaust right there. Where's the pre-filter? Well, the exhaust channel is actually coming up from around oh, here. Okay. So inside gotcha. here, we've got some plenums that are directing air around. But uh, your back port that mm -hmm. brings in your outdoor air is what's going to go through this filter. So this is your, your uh, filter for your incoming air. And in your case, um, we've got some additional filtration, but normally what we, if, if we don't have that, we'll use this uh, MERV 13 filter. And MERV 13 is really good yeah. filtration. Not quite HEPA quality, but it's the 99.9 .9, uh, right. kind of quality. So yeah. we're, all the pollen, all the mold spores, all the nasty stuff, before it even gets to the core is going to be filtered. Exactly. So we're going to protect the core. And because this is the outdoor air coming in as supply air to the house, we're going to protect everybody in the house too. Yeah. And that filter probably needs to be checked how often? You should look at it every quarter. Okay. Yeah. Typical, you know, uh, maintenance schedule. On this side over here, we've got a lower grade MERV 8 filter. Mm -hmm. um, and the MERV 8 filter is basically filtering your return air from the house. And that's only to protect the core. All right. So your, this, your pet dander, yeah. your dust in the house, we're trying not to get all that into exactly. the core and dirty it up. Because when that core gets dirty, the efficiency drops. Yep. We're never recirculating air with this unit, ever. So we're always doing a constant air exchange. This air will always be directed right through your exhaust pipe out that gable end. That's awesome. So that's really just to protect the core itself and keep it clean and keep that heat exchange going. Now that's not the only filtration on this unit, right though? That's right. Uh, in your case, and this is, uh, you know, we can, we can do this as an option. But up here, what we've got, our supply air coming out before it gets distributed to the house is gonna go through an additional filter casing. And if we open this up, 
we'll see inside here we've got an upgraded filter. This is actually a MERV 15 filter and this is getting basically into your hospital outpatient type mm -hmm. category of filtration. That's and really as you high can filtration. see, you know, we've got more surface area. So, you know, we're not going to add a lot of static pressure to the system. And we've got a bigger, thicker filter that's going to give you a bigger, uh, a longer lifespan. Now, what if I want even more filtration or let's say I was in a wildfire area, there's smoke, there's other things. Yeah. Can I upgrade that even too? Yeah. The, the other option for this uh, filter casing right here is an activated charcoal filter, uh -huh. uh, so a carbon filter. And, and basically that'll di help deal with smoke or odors that might exist in your neighborhood. Got it. So yep. that so if I did have wildfires outside, that would filter that out before it sent it into my yeah. house. Yeah, we've, we've, we, I've got a, a colleague out on the West Coast. He lives near Oregon. Um, and he's basically running his system at a lower speed, but he's continued his ventilation. He's put in an active charcoal filter and, um, and he's got no smoke inside his house. That's so, awesome. Yeah. All right, now one of the things I love about this system, and one of the reasons why I chose it, is I'm trying to build this really tight house, right? A house that doesn't have a bunch of air leaking in, and I didn't want exhaust fans everywhere and depressurization going on in my house. And that's something that I've wrestled with mentally for a long time. And that's one of the things I think makes a lot of sense about this system, because it's balanced. Talk to me about the supply and the exhaust. And then underneath here, uh, if you look underneath, we've got basically two um, manifolds, kind of like a structured plumbing system, a manifold plumbing system. And these two front ones right here, this one hasn't been installed yet. This is what it's gonna look like in a minute. These have these little ports on here. And we've got 16 of them on the exhaust. And underneath in the back, we've got 16 on the supply as well. Talk to me about these, Chris. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to give people an engineered solution. So when they go to, to, to connect the system up, um, you know, they, they don't have to, to engineer a uh, trunk and branch system and figure out how much flow is going to be in what's, what branch. Yep. Um, so what we've got is this manifold system. We can plan for the same amount of airflow basically to go through each one of these tubes. We can connect it to a manifold and give that give every tube on that manifold the same pressure, same air pressure. And in that way, we just plan in multiples in, in our case of 12 CFM per tube. That's awesome. And we decide which room needs, you know, whether it's 12, 24, 36 CFM of supply or of return. And um, and we'll break it down that way. And this uh, this main part of this box here is actually a silencer. Mm -hmm. So what this is going to do is it's and in this case it's the return side. So it's going to keep exhaust fan noise from going down these tubes to your your bathroom uh, or wherever. And it also keeps uh, because we're connecting all the rooms to one manifold, it keeps crosstalk from the rooms as well from happening. Ah, so the silencer is good. Um, and then the manifold plate, obviously, as I said, gives us that constant pressure at each tube. So this tubing, this is uh, your version or your product called ComfoTube, right? Yeah. Uh, it looks like corrugated uh, pipe, almost like a uh, uh, you know like a shop vac hose. It's very rigid. You can't you can't crush it, so it's not going to get shoved in like flex duct would and get crushed and not have airflow. But it also has a liner on the inside as well. So it's a little smooth. It looks corrugated on the on the outside, but it's actually smooth on the right. inside. And you guys have a really dialed in system uh -huh. for installing it. Show me how that works. So, you know, part of the performance of a ventilation system is getting the air where you want it. Mm -hmm. And if you create a system that's leaking all over the place, you're not getting the air where you want it. You want me to hold this so you can show sure. it? Sure, yeah. So what we do with this is, is uh, in this particular uh, uh, approach with this Comfo tube, this by the way is a, a high density polyethylene tube. It's milk jug material. Got it. So we put a, an O-ring around here mm -hmm. and we'll press that down in. And basically it seats down inside there. And then you've got your air, air uh, tightness because of the O-ring. And then you slide this clip in here. And this is going to give you your mechanical fastening. So now that tube's not going to come out. Not coming out. And as I said earlier, manifold, meaning home run. So basically we're going from here to the outlet. One continuous vacuum hose. No right. joints, no couplings. Nothing, just like uh, you know, a PEX manifold system. And the two that are down there already are connected to my daughter's bedroom that I showed you earlier. 
And each one of those, as Chris said earlier, is about 12 CFM. Uh, and so we're gonna decide in each bedroom how many occupants we have and how much supply we need. We're also gonna think about exhaust, right? So a laundry room, we may have one or two. Uh, a bathroom, we might have one or two. A huge bathroom or a bigger wet area, you might have three in there, you might have more. In my master bedroom, I've got a three port uh, supply because there's two of us living in the master. And the thing I like about the system is it's running continuously. So for instance, in my kids' baths, I have a hard time getting them to turn their bath fans on. Even though I have a countdown timer in there and I say, hey, when you get in the shower, hit that button and it'll count down and run for 30 minutes. Oftentimes I come after them and realize they never use the exhaust fan, I gotta hit it. In this case, this unit's running 24 seven. Just a little bit of sucking out of those wet and stinky areas and just a little bit of supply to those bedrooms and to those public spaces. So all night long as I'm sleeping, I've got just a little bit of puff of that fresh filtered air from the outside. And then in those bathrooms, even if they forget to run the, um, uh, or forget to actually, I haven't talked about this, but if they forget to put it in the boost mode, it's always gonna be sucking just a little bit out. Now, speaking of boost mode, I didn't get into this. Chris, tell us about fan speed yeah. and controls for this system. Because I mentioned earlier, my house is designed to run about 180 CFM all the time. Yep. So the nice thing about uh, the Q series of ERVs from Zender is, again, we've got constant balance going on. Mm -hmm. So what you do with this unit is it's got four preset speeds. You've got your normal speed, which for us is speed two. You can have a low speed, speed one. Uh, you can have boost mode, speed three. And then we've got away mode. So if you're going away on vacation, you basically can kind of put, put the thing in away mode. It gives a constant trickle, just a trickle of air in the house, keep it from getting stale. But with those four preset speeds, you can make them whatever you want in this controller and it will keep track of it and make sure those stay the same. I love it. Then from your controller, control panel either in the house or here on the front of the machine, or if we collect, uh, connect this gateway, we can allow you to do it even from your smartphone. Um, you'd be able to jump between those four speeds at any time you want. That's great. And you can independently adjust those speeds. So if you, you know, in your case, we're doing 180 CFM. Mm -hmm. uh, we might add a little bit more just for this attic to keep it fresh, but, um, but 180 CFM. And uh, if, if you decide that's too much, you don't need that much, dial it down to 150 and change your preset. No big deal. Easy. Yep. Now what happens if you go on vacation and leave this thing running? If you leave it running and you forget to go into away mode, then uh, just before your flight takes off, you get on your app and, and you set it back to away mode. It'll ask you how long you want it, give it a date, it'll keep it in away mode until that date. That's really cool. Yeah. The other thing that I mentioned earlier in the video that I wanna come back to is I love that I've only got two uh, basically nostrils in my house, right? I've got this one right here, which is exhausting, and I've got one on the other side, which is bring it in. I've eliminated all those bath fans. I don't have any of these other random penetrations that I need to seal. I just have two now. I've gone probably from at least eight in a house like this, normally, maybe more, down to two. That is really cool for me. That means I've got a much more reliable house. The other thing I wanna mention on that is uh, a quick example from uh, your car. Have you ever sat in your car and turned the engine off? And it only takes a few minutes really to be uncomfortable. And to get comfortable, just drop, usually just drop the window down by an inch and you've got a little bit of fresh air and you feel much better. That's basically the same system that's happening here. When your car's running, you're bringing a little bit of fresh air and you're comfortable. When you're sealed up tightly in a tight house and you don't have that, the moisture can build up, the VOCs are gonna build up, uh, the CO2 is gonna build up, hopefully there's no carbon monoxide building up, but this system is always exhausting and always supplying just a little bit of fresh air. Speaking of uh, carbon monoxide, Chris, in my house, I don't have any combustion appliances. I have, I'm basically running an all electric house. I have Mitsubishi uh, heat pumps for heating and cooling. Uh, I'm gonna be putting a sand and heat pump water heater in. Uh, I'm gonna be using an induction cooktop. So I don't have any natural gas appliances. Hmm. So I really don't have anything to make carbon monoxide, but let's say you've got somebody who wants a big, uh, you know, Miele, gas cooktop with all these burners. What, do you, what can this do in terms of making sure that my carbon monoxide or dioxide levels for that matter don't yeah. rise? Yeah, as far as carbon monoxide, I mean, just the regular ventilation rate is gonna, is gonna go a long ways to keep the house safe. You're mm -hmm. gonna be constantly changing. In, in your case, we'll probably be changing the air 
about uh, 0.4 times per hour okay. through the whole house. So that's gonna take care of those rates. If uh, CO2 is an issue um, or VOCs are an issue, um, different environments, you know, we have uh, basically a, a control box here that we can connect to the queue. Um, your bathroom fan switches will connect to this box, but also inside our terminals to connect uh, any zero to 10 volt device like a carbon dioxide sensor or a VOC sensor. Uh, Zender sells a, a carbon dioxide sensor that you can mount on the wall in a bedroom. You can put up to four of them on the system. Hmm. Um, so maybe so every bedroom. So if you had multiple, you have six friends sleeping over in that bedroom, all of a sudden your CO2 yeah. rises. Yep. This could jump in into, into uh, boost mode. Yep. And then you could double the fresh air right yep. into that room. Is that That's right? right. That's right. Yeah, so cool. it'll monitor the CO2 levels and help the fan speed to respond to that. Man, Chris, I gotta say, I've seen this installed before, but having done it now, it feels complicated at first. And when you see this, you might think, oh my gosh. But now that I've been on site for two days, it's really not very complicated. Yeah. And when I was in Vancouver, I saw a ton of builders doing it themselves. I think if you were a motivated homeowner, you could even do this system yourself. It's not rocket science. They're doing all the layout and the engineering for you so you know what to do. All these pipes are home runs. They've got it pretty dummy proof. Uh, plug and play manifold, I love it. Yep. Chris, let's transition to downstairs. Let's show these guys um, what the boots and the outlets look like and how that fresh air is getting delivered. Sounds good. All right, we'll meet y'all downstairs. So here's where we decided we would set 24 CFM of supply, not through the floor, but through the ceiling above. All right, so this is my daughter's bedroom. Her bed's against that wall right there. And that has got two tubes coming to it. Remember we said they're about 12 CFM per. So that supply box is made for that. And that supply box, basically everything's just plug in, just like you showed me upstairs, right, yeah, Chris? that's right. It goes together the same way. That's really easy. Yeah. Let's walk over to the boys' bedroom and show what that looks like or what it's going to look like. And I'm going to grab the uh, termination head here as well. So this one we've got screwed to the subfloor now. It's ready to get uh, tubes installed. Will you hold that for a second? Sure. And uh, Chris gave me a great tip. We haven't done it yet, but we're about to do this. You can see these are about, I don't know, six, seven, eight inches long. And this is roughly a five inch uh, hole. So what we did is we took a five inch hole saw right here, and we're gonna take that onto a piece of plywood that's the same size as your drywall. Now this is five eighths zip. I've got five eighths sheetrock. I'm gonna put a screw here and a screw here. I'm gonna hold that in place. And then what I'm gonna use is use this plywood as a template for a saw that's gonna zip this off at the level of my sheetrock. So when we're done here, this will be nice and flush. So when the sheetrock guys come, I'll be all set. And then at commissioning, talk to me about the vents that are gonna be in each one of those places, Chris. Yeah, this is our Luna diffuser. This is our supply diffuser. We have a Luna extract diffuser as well. And basically this is gonna fit right up inside that five inch duct right there. And uh, we're gonna air seal it with this gasket that's on the back side. Pre-gasketed. Yep. yep, yep, just pop it in and you're air sealed, easy as that. And then this can be adjusted during commissioning. So we just give this cover a little turn and pull it off. What we see is a, is a locking mechanism. If we unlock that, which we'll do real quick here, we can basically... Now keep your eyes tuned right here into this. This is fixed and this is gonna move. You'll see right. as Chris turns it. We'll see our gap close down as we turn it clockwise. If we wanna open it up during commissioning and get more airflow, we'll, we'll back it off counterclockwise. Once we figure out where we need to be, push this in, we'll lock it in place and there it's tamper proof. So get the cover back on so it looks beautiful. It kind of looks like a little smoke detector on the ceiling. There's really nothing to it. But one cool thing about this is I don't have to think about duct length or duct sizing or all that stuff. I just run a comfo tube to every location. And some of my locations are real close to the unit, so they're gonna have plenty of airflow. Some of my locations may be 40 feet away of comfo tubes snaking everywhere. And then at the end, they're gonna turn on the fan. And when we commission this, we're gonna put a flow hood up against the ceiling with this and go, all right, how many CFM do we have coming out? Do we need more or do we need less? 
dial it in right here. So everything gets done later. There's no weirdness with I need a two inch or a three inch or a six inch duct here. No, everything goes with those vacuum cleaner looking hoses, yeah. comfo tubes, and then later we can dial it in. So at this point, I don't need anybody from Zender on site. I appreciate you coming, Chris, but <laughs> I don't need anybody special. Just like I said, in Vancouver, I saw builders doing this in their houses. They were building for clients. Their guys ran the tubes, they set everything up, there was nothing to it. Maybe a duck guy would do a couple of the rigid connections upstairs, but that's really it. Pretty straightforward, Chris. Yeah, that's right. What did I miss on this tour? Well, when we get this up there and we're adjusting this, because the unit is self-adjusting, mm -hmm. as we close this down or open it up, uh, we'll adjust only the airflow in this room. The, the unit's gonna maintain the overall airflow for the whole house, so that 180 CFM is gonna stay constant even while we make these fine adjustments. I love it. Yeah. You know, one thing we haven't spoken about, and we kind of saved the best for the last, talk to me about uh, how people can get a bid on this yeah. and give us a range of costs. What does this system look like from a material standpoint? Let's say if I'm a builder and want to install it myself, and then what would this look like if you're a homeowner watching this who wants it installed on their job or a builder who says, hey, I just want to get a bid on this right. for someone to install yeah, it? Yeah, no, great question. So uh, first of all, Zender is the only company in North America that's currently selling a complete system. So you get not only an ERV, not only the, the appliance, mm -hmm. but you get the whole air distribution system that goes with it. Um, and again, it's, it's engineered to work together. Yep. So that package cost for a house like this is probably gonna be in the neighborhood of ten to $12,000 for okay. the complete equipment package. And that'll include- That's the, the duct work, that's the grills and registers, that's, right. that's all that stuff, right? Includes the ERV, everything from your exterior grill to these interior diffusers. Um, and also includes, if you want it, uh, a third party commissioning service so that uh, we can get that dialed in. Um, a smaller house or, or a large apartment might be more like five to six thousand dollars for the equipment package. Okay, so it's definitely more than a basic box ERV, for the sure. small ones that I've installed before. But what's awesome about the system is really everything's included in there. Yeah. When you all shipped that freight out to me, I had everything I needed in, in just a few boxes. Yeah. Right. And then what about install? What do you think if I bought this package? What do you think uh, install might run yeah. on something like this? Well, uh, uh, an installer that hasn't seen this package before is going to scratch their head a little bit and say, "How do I? How do I do this?" Um, but uh, actually, they'll find once they do one that the labor of putting this together is much easier than running a trunk and branch system out of sheet metal. Um, it doesn't require the specific skills of working with sheet metal. Mm -hmm. It's more of an assembly project. Yeah, it's so, an erector set basically. Yeah, you got it. So uh, I think labor, I typically, just in rough terms, I tell people to expect about half the cost of the equipment package, add that on top for your labor to install and you're probably in the ballpark. Got it, yep. not bad. Man, Chris, really appreciate you being in this video with me. This, this, as I've said, I've seen it in several houses. My buddy, Steve Basic, an architect, uh, up in Boston has specified it and I've seen it installed in his houses. Uh, but then what really clicked with me was when I saw those builders in Vancouver installing themselves with your comfort tube system under construction, not just finished houses. I said, you know, that looks not that hard. I think we could do it. And Jeff's been uh, uh, learning the system. He's my main installer. I think we're good. I'm excited to use more yeah. of these. The last thing that I don't think we mentioned was talk to me about uh, roughly what the running watts of this system might be. Yeah, I mean they're gonna this system right here is probably going to be in the neighborhood of 100 watts or so, um, but you're 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 looking at a really low cost of operation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, not that much at all. And again, it's running 24 seven and it's exhausting the same amount as it's supplying. And I've eliminated all those bath fans that I might spend 120, 150 bucks a bath fan on. So man, great system. Chris, I really appreciate you coming out. I'll put a link in the description uh, for Zender's contact info. They are the dominant player in the world in this industry. Uh, they're all over the nation. I think they're number one in Europe, number one in China. Uh, smaller here in America, I want to change that. I think this is an incredible system. And whether you're building a passive house like I am, or you're just building a really good house that's really tight, you need a really good system like this, guys. Go check it out, very impressive. Big thanks to Zender for sponsoring today's video. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, otherwise we'll see you next time on The Build Show.